Hello and welcome to the Friday, April 28th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just got back home earlier today. Yesterday's episode was a lot about RSA, so want to step back a little bit and try to cover some of the things that we may have missed yesterday. First story actually brought back uh, memories of RSA like a couple of years ago when I talked about vulnerabilities in backup systems. That has come up occasionally. The latest uh, instance is a vulnerability in Veeam backup that I did mention actually in March when it came out. There was a proof of concept exploit that was made public later in March, I think around the 20th. And now we do have ransomware being deployed using this vulnerability. The vulnerability in question here is CVE 2023-27532. And again, a patch was made available March 7th. The CVSS score of this vulnerability is 7.5. With secure attributes, these attacks to the Fin7 group has been around for quite a while and has sort of been in the ransomware business, in particular targeting enterprises and using whatever sort of the vulnerability of the day is. To quickly check if you may be vulnerable, uh, do a quick port scan on port 9401. This is where the Beam backup service listens. It is exposed via SSL, but definitely should not be exposed to the internet. I may have mentioned in a recent podcast that Google Authenticator now supports syncing of the embedded secrets across different devices using Google accounts. Uh, this was sort of one of the big shortcomings of Google Authenticator for quite a while, because whenever you got a new device, you had to essentially transfer sort of a re-register all of these uh, secrets uh, with the respective uh, websites, which was quite cumbersome. And a lot of competitors already had some syncing in place. So no big surprise that Google Authenticator implemented a function, but apparently there was a problem here that uh, the secrets were stored in the clear in Google's cloud. This is something that will be fixed now according to Google. It will implement end-to-end -end encryption for these authenticator secrets. When this will exactly happen is not clear at this point. On the other hand, while Google Authenticator was sort of instrumental in actually making these sort of one-time passwords popular as a second factor, there are now plenty of other options. Most password managers and such will also sync these secrets for you. So there may not necessarily be a need to have a separate application just for the second factor tokens. And then, well, today I became aware of a recently patched vulnerability in Keycloak that I didn't mention it. And I think it's important to mention this. Keycloak is a fairly popular open source identity management system. So you can use it for single sign-on for your web applications. And it's sort of one of those examples where sometimes very simple flaws are hiding in sort of these complex blobs that are being pushed forth and back. Turns out when you're authenticating via Keycloak, there are sort of four UUIDs, unique identifiers that are being pushed back. One of them identifies the user. All you have to do is change that identifier to a user that you would like to impersonate. And well, you get that particular user's ID. So to exploit this, you need a valid account, but with one valid account, you're able then to impersonate other users. This is a, certainly a must patch of vulnerability. It has been fixed in Keycloak version 2101. And like I said, this has been out for a while. I just uh, missed it. Uh, April 14th was when the blog was published that actually revealed some of the details about this vulnerability. And the recent version of Microsoft Edge appear to be leaking URLs that you're typing in the URL bar to Bing. 
The reason behind this appears to be that the original intent of this feature was that for very selective sites, like some social media sites and such, the URL is being sent to Bing in order to then insert special recommendations into the browser window. But apparently in the version released on April 7th, the behavior of this feature changed in that it now sends data from all URLs to Bing. Of course, this could contain any particular text that the user types into the browser. It was only supposed to send data from specific allow listed URLs and not everything uh, to Bing. You can disable the feature and I'll link to an article in the register that describes how to do so. Uh, no patch available yet from Microsoft. Edge of course is built on top of Chromium, but this is not a Chromium feature. This is something that Microsoft added specifically to Edge. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening. If you like this podcast, uh, please, please, leave a review in your favorite podcast platform. Or if you don't have the time for that, just simply click the five stars and that'll help. So thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.